playwright, and novelist. I would like to invite Dr. Dipanvita Srivastava, Director, School of Foreign Language, IGNU, to deliver her welcome address. Dr. Dipanvita Srivastava is Associate Professor of French and specializes in the areas of didactics of French language, open distance and distributed learning, translation and interpretation, and mobility and travel studies. Actively involved in academic projects with the Embassy of France, India Africa Virtual University, Commonwealth of Learning Canada, ICSSR, UNESCO, Commonwealth Educational Media Center for Asia, New Delhi, Asian Association of Open Universities, and the Sastri Indo-Canadian Institute, New Delhi. She has been appointed as principal lexicographer and language expert by the Ministry of Education, Government of India, and currently heading the United Nations project on the Hindi French bilingual dictionary under the Central Hindi Directorate, New Delhi. Over to you, dear ma'am. Well, thank you, Dr. Vishal. Uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor Indira Gandhi National Open University, Professor Nageshwar Ra. Ms. Yulia Arayeva, Head Cultural Department, Russian Embassy in New Delhi, India. Dr. Nina Kozlov Seva, uh, Head International Division, Department of Foreign Languages and Intercultural Communication, Financial University, Russia. Professors uh, Galina Tryakova and Ms. Alina Guseva from the Financial University, Russia. Our distinguished Pro Vice Chancellors. Indira Gandhi National Open University, Professor Satyakam, Professor Sumitra Kukriti, Professor Uma Kanji Lal, ma'am, Professor Shrikant Mohapatra, Professor Hazarika, and Professor Meena, all directors of academic schools, IGNU, division heads, regional directors, and all our dear participants and distinguished guests for this event. I extend a very warm welcome to all from the School of Foreign Languages on this extremely special event. And I'm proud to say this is the fourth year in succession that the School of Foreign Languages has continued celebrating 6th of June, the birth anniversary of the legendary literate Alexander Pushkin, who is not only a literate limited to Russia, but a giant figure in literature, cultures, studies across the world. For us at the School of Foreign Languages, this occasion has remained throughout a very special day. And we pride ourselves in associating with Russian culture, Russian studies, and as the department expands, it becomes more of a special occasion to associate and collaborate with one of the oldest universities in Russia, the financial universities, which also celebrates uh, its 100th year of founding. Uh, so it is indeed a very special occasion at this time for us. A little on the legendary literature Pushkin from my end, hailed across as the father of Russian literature, the 19th century Pushkin's work and style have marked a watershed period in Russian literature, literary studies and history of the 18th century and the dawn of the literary process of the 19th century. His unique style laid foundation for modern Russian literature, setting new records for development of Russian language and culture across the world. For us at the Foreign Languages School, this has a special importance as we are all together handling various other foreign languages. And the role of Alexander Pushkin has been especially special where he brought in various genres and styles across European literature at the same time, taking uh, specificities of Russian literature across to other literary genres of Europe. Collaborating with the Financial University of Russia indeed marks a special occasion for the School of Foreign Languages, Indira Gandhi National Open University, as the department has taken important strides in initiating programs uh, to, to fulfill needs of professionals 
working in the global space, uh, requiring knowledge of foreign languages. And this gels beautifully with the latest policies brought out by the new education policy of the government of India as well. So we look forward to a seamless collaboration in future days as well. And with this, I, I uh, extend my warm welcome once again to all our distinguished guests today. I declare the forum open. Dr. Vishal, would you take the event ahead, please? Thank you. You are not audible, Vishal. Uh, am I audible right now? Yes. Now, would you please repeat? Uh, yeah. First of all, I would like to uh, thank our director, uh, Dr. Dipanvita Asrivasta, for her insightful talk. And there are many facets of Alexander Sergeyevich Pushkin, which we all know, and which I think we will explore and re-explore during the course of today's webinar. I would like to introduce Mr. Sivaji Bhaskar, Assistant Professor, School of Foreign Language, Indira Gandhi National Open University. He is an expert of Russian language, literature, and civilization, but his expertise on didactics of foreign language goes beyond the confines of Russian, as he has also designed and developed Korean and Japanese language program for our school. Mr. Sivaji Bhaskar's interest on Pushkin goes back to 2011, when he organized a national seminar on the same day and again in 2019, when at his behest, the SRFL celebrated the Russian Language Day. Over to you, dear sir. Thank you, Dr. Vishal. Sabra Pajalavaj. Sena Shikoligi Kalyagi is a finance of University of Sabra Pajalavaj. Vajai Migos is a Solstva Rasi. Gaspaja Raiva. Sena Shikoligi is a student. I welcome everyone here on this momentous occasion. This is the big day for Russian language, also celebrated as the International Day of Russian Language. And uh, Alexander Pushkin, who is considered to be the greatest Russian writer, poet, author, was born in this very day, 6th of June, 1799. It is considered that Many, uh, you know, big figures of uh, literature all across the world, they say that Pushkin is the beginning of all beginnings. He introduced such a genre and a prose writing in the literature that it took Russian literature to the golden height. That is why he is one of the reasons why Russian literature is treated as the treasure of the all literature of the world. It gave us an inspiration, and I'm deeply thankful to my director, Dr. Dipanvita Srivastava, with whom I discussed this idea of organizing this webinar on Alexander Pushkin, the icon of world literature. Because Pushkin is not only, you know, a writer from Russia, he's a global writer, he's an icon of world literature. That is why we have been reading Pushkin through translations in English and in, in, the, and in other Indian languages. A lot of work has been done in this area. To make this webinar more interactive, this time we have also invited our colleagues from Financial University Russia. We have Dr. Alina with us. Dr. Alina, are you with us? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. And Hello. Dr. Galina with us and our most esteemed guest from the Financial University, Nina Kozlovskova, who will be delivering her lecture in the first session. In the second session, we have our own students and my colleague, Dr. Vishal, delivering a talk, as well as two colleagues from Financial University. In this webinar, we would like to explore the different facets of Alexander Pushkin's life. We will also explore the different facets of how Pushkin, uh, you know, help us in making intercultural connection, not only between India and Russia, but with all countries of the world. That is why it is a great experience here at our own school, the School of Foreign Languages, where lots of different foreign languages are taught. We have colleagues from French, 
from Spanish, from Arabic, from German, from any many other languages who contributed to make our school uh, truly global. Perhaps our school is the only school in India which is offering the different foreign language programs and courses through open and distance learning. And we are also, you know, uh, at the same time offering the programs through online work. In this uh, particular webinar, uh, which is going to be held in different two parts, the first part where we will be having our esteemed guests from the Russian embassy. I welcome you, ma'am. Uh, and our guest from the uh, Financial University, uh, Dr. Nina, I welcome you, ma'am. With the permission of our Honorable Vice Chancellor, sir, and PVC ma'am and director, we would like to go into the formal, uh, you know, uh, interaction between the guest and our Astrophil and Ignu uh, fraternity. Thank you very much. Over to you, Vishal. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Today on the eve of Russian Language Day and the 224th birth anniversary of the great Russian poet, Alexander Pushkin, tributes and literary meetings are organized in the various educational institutions in different parts of the world. The Embassy of Russia and the Russian House actively organizes and promotes various cultural events through its various cultural networks. We have as our distinguished guest, Ms. Yulia Arayeva, head of the cultural department, Russian Embassy, New Delhi. Dear ma'am, we would like to thank you and the Russian Embassy for the constant support to the School of Foreign Language, IGNU, for the pedagogical and cultural materials. I would now invite Ms. Yulia Arayeva to deliver her opening remarks. Over to you, dear ma'am. Uh, good afternoon, uh, dear friends, dear lovers of uh, Russian language, dear admirers of Pushkin poetry. Uh, it's my pleasure and my honor to, to join uh, this event. Thank you for inviting me. And today, uh, on the birthday of one of the world's greatest poets, Alexander Pushkin, we celebrate Russian language as well, as it was mentioned before. The language uh, whose fate, according to Pushkin himself, turned out to be a happy one. This is true indeed. The rich history and heritage of the Russian language literally fascinates anyone who comes across it or studies it. And since uh, the birth of modern Russian in the early 19th century, it was fated that the language would become one of rich culture serving as the cradle of great literature, be it the poetic works of Pushkin, the novels of Tolstoy and Dostoevsky, the plays of Chekhov. These works are all preserved on the bookshelves all over the world. A great variety of beliefs, opinions, and points of view has been introduced to the world through the Russian language, enriching humanity as a whole. On the 6th of June, we pay tribute to the Russian language as a language of science and scientific discovery. We recall the first publication of Mendeleev's periodic table, for example, that astonishing list of the elements that make up our material world. And remembering Yuri Gagarin's space flight, we would also recall that the first worlds spoken by a man in space were spoken in the Russian language as well. And of course, today we celebrate uh, Russian language as a language of education, a language of exchange, a language of dialogue and information and communication. It is uh, the fourth most translated language in the world, contributing to the wide international dissemination of books, newspapers, and magazines. Russian is one of the six languages that has enabled the people of the world to engage in dialogue within the United Nations since its very foundation. And this is the meaning of uh, multilingualism, a principle defended at UNESCO. So let us remember with gratitude that contribution that the Russian language has made and continues to make every day to culture, science, education, and uh, communication all over the world. 
And uh, today I would like to express uh, my sincere gratitude to our colleagues from IGNO for uh, their um, sincere love and promotion of the Russian language uh, in India. Thank you, dear friends. Thank you a lot. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for your insightful discussion. Uh, on behalf of IGNU and on behalf of School of Foreign Language, we would like to thank you for your wonderful presentation. We cherish the productive diplomatic relations with the Russian Federation and cooperation in different spheres of life. Thank you, ma'am. So taking the webinar uh, forward, when we talk about Pushkin, so Pushkin is to the Russian literature what Shakespeare is to English literature. The parallels are numerous. Regarded as the founder of modern Russian literature, Pushkin's poetry, narratives, novels, and especially his dramatic works helped standardize the Russian language, created and solidified vocabulary, spelling, and nuanced phrasing, and idiomatic usage. His influence was enormous and long lasting, not only in Russian literature, but also on world literature. I would like to now introduce uh, Professor Sumitra Kukreti, Pro-Vice Pro Chancellor Ignu. She is an outstanding scholar of T.S. Eliot, contemporary English women literature. She has authored many books and over 50 research papers in journals of national and in international repute. Before joining Ignu as Pro-Vice Chancellor, Professor Sumitra Kukreti has taught in HNB Garhwal University, Srinagar Garhwal, GB Pant University of Engineering and Technology, Pantanagar, and Mahatma Jyotibai Phule, Royal Khand University, Bareilly. I would now like to invite Professor Sumitra Kukreti to deliver her special address. Over to you, respected ma'am. Thank you. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Honorable Vice Chancellor Ignu, Professor Nageshwar Raoji, distinguished guests, Ms. Yulia Areva, Head of the Cultural Department, Russian Embassy, and Dr. Nina Kozoveska, Financial University, Russia. Director SOFL, Dr. Deepanvita Srivastava, all other directors, webinar convener, Dr. Shivaji Bhaskar, and other faculty from SOFL. Good evening to one and all. Actually, I'm very happy that today's School of Foreign Languages is organizing this webinar on the theme, Alexander Pushkin, the icon of world literature, to commemorate 224th birth anniversary of Pushkin. While looking back at the history, we find that India has always shared very cordial relations with Russia. Since the early decades uh, of Indian independence, Russian literature was available in India through the mode of translation. And I completely agree with the speaker that uh, it is one of the most uh, translated language in the world. And Tolstoy, Dostoevsky, Maxim, Maxim Gorky, and Pushkin were among the most popular Russian authors. Uh, the popularity of Russian authors can be assessed by the fact that Virginia Woolf, the famous British critic, appreciates Russian authors in her seminal work, The Modern Fiction, for providing slice of life to readers. After reading Crime and Punishment, and War and Peace. She regarded Dostoevsky and uh, the uh, Tolstoy, Leo Tolstoy, as the greatest Russian novelist. But definitely, Pushkin enjoyed same authority in all the genres of literature, be, be it novel writing, as short story writer, playwright, and as a poet. Even today, many critics regard him as the greatest Russian poet ever. So he reflects Russian culture distinctly in his poetry. I'm sure this webinar would be immensely fruitful and helpful for all our learners enrolled in certificate and master's program in Russian language and all other people, uh, the audiences who want to explore Russian literature, particularly Alexander Pushkin. At last, I congratulate Dr. Deepanvita Srivastava, Director SOFL and Program Coordinator, Mr. Shivaji Bhaskar for this academic endeavor. I convey my best wishes to the school and hope this trend will continue in future. Over to you, Dr. Vishal. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Dr. Vishal. Uh, 
Thank you. Thank you, dear ma'am. Thank you. Yeah, as we all know that the works of Pushkin resonates not only with a Russian man, but it also resonates with any man who has a taste in literature. In the words of the great Russian writer Nikolai Gogol, Pushkin is an extraordinary phenomena and maybe the only phenomena of the Russian spirit. It is a Russian man in his development in which he may appear in 200 years. In it, the Russian nature, the Russian soul, the Russian language, the Russian character were reflected in the same purity, in such purified beauty as the landscape of the convex surface of the optical glass. With this, I would now like to invite Dr. Nina Kozlovseva, Deputy Head of Scientific Work and International Activities of the Department of Foreign Languages and Intercultural Communication, Financial University, Russia, for a talk titled Pushkin in Changing World. Over to you, dear ma'am. Thank you very much. Uh, hello, everyone from sunny Moscow. Uh, greetings from the Financial University. And first of all, I would like to thank you on behalf of our Department of Foreign Languages and Intercultural Communication uh, of the Faculty of International Economic Relations of the Financial University, Moscow, uh, for uh, letting us be a part of this amazing event. And uh, thank you for your kind invitation. We hope that it's going to be uh, only the first step to our fruitful, big, uh, amazing cooperation between two our universities uh, and to our department, our department and your School of Foreign Languages. So uh, coming to the point, <laughs> Pushkin's birthday is most certainly a very important date and memorable event for every Russian. Uh, as example of how Pushkin became a part of our Russian mentality uh, can be shown by the expression, who knows, Pushkin. Uh, it's a phrase used in many cases, for example, a scenario where a child doesn't know something and ask uh, the parents. Uh, in Russia, it's going to say like, кто знает, Pushkin, кто знает. <laughs> Uh, I feel and believe it is of great importance that his name is known and remembered everywhere, not just in Russia, as we Russians say that Pushkin is our everything. In 2017-2018, when I was writing my PhD thesis, I conducted a survey uh, of uh, what uh, Russia is associated abroad. And more than 800 people from 60 countries took part in this survey. One of the questions was, who do you associate Russia with? And Alexander Pushkin was the, the most popular answer. Uh, there are Pushkin's monuments worldwide, over 190 of them in India, of course, China, Mexico, Philippines, Ethiopia, etc. This is especially surprising given the fact that Pushkin himself had never been out of Russia. It is no coincidence, though, that on his birthday in 2011, the United Nations decided to celebrate the International Day of, Ru of the Russian Language. It is no wonder that the centers of Russian language and culture all over the world are named after him. Pushkin Institutes for Russian Language have become analogs of Confucius Institute for Chinese, Goethe Institute for German, Cervantes Institute for Spanish. Pushkin is known as the father of modern Russian language. As Kuprin uh, wrote in his article, Son of Russian Poetry, Pushkin took this magnificent language from the people and gave it back to the people purified from chaff, beauty and expression, bright, clean and transparent, like a mountain spring, elastic like steel, ringing like gold and invigorated and fragrant like good old wine. Alexander Pushkin is widely regarded as one of the greatest writers of the world literature. Born in Moscow in 1799, Pushkin wrote poetry, plays, and prose that have had a profound impact on Russian culture and beyond. His works are celebrated for their lyricism, emotional depth, and exploration of universal themes. Statistically, Pushkin is not the most famous and read abroad Russian classic. Although the European fame of Pushkin began during his life and translation of his works were taken by such famous writers as Prosper Merime, Tolstoy or Dostoevsky are translated more often. 
The reasons for this are more or less obvious. Their novels lose much less in translation than Pushkin's attractivity, attractively bought, naked in words of Leo Tolstoy prose. One of Pushkin's most famous work is his novel, Eugenia Negin, Evgenia Negin. Numerous attempts to create a reader-friendly English translation of this novel have been made but have not yet been successful, including the translation of Vladimir Nabokov, who attached to his English language version of the Pushkin's novel his commentaries, taking four volumes in first edition and more than 900 pages in Russian translation. The translation itself thus proves powerless to convey the ironic game of Pushkin with the plot and style, the dialogue with the reader, the repeatedly changing tone of the author, without which Evgenia Negin turns out to be just a novel with unhappy love duel and two letters. As it came out in the famous adaptation of Marta Fine in 1999. This idea is confirmed by Thomas Mann's letter to a friend in which he was wrote, I'm always filled with deep regret that Pushkin's poetry remained almost inaccessible to me, as I did not have enough time and excess energy to learn the Russian language. However, Pushkin's stories give enough reason to admire him. Pushkin's influence on Russian literature cannot be overstated. He is often referred to as the father of Russian literature also, not just the language. His works have inspired countless writers, including Fyodor Dostoevsky and Leo Tolstoy. Even today, Pushkin remains an enduring symbol of Russian culture and identity. Beyond Russia, Pushkin's impact can be seen in the works of writers around the world. His use of language and exploration of universal themes have made him a beloved figure in literary circles from Europe to South Africa. The universality of Pushkin's artistic thinking, the richness of his spiritual world, the inexhaustible depth of thought in his creation, all this makes it possible to speak of him as the first writer involved not only in the Russian, but also in the world literature and wider cultural process. It was Pushkin's creativity that was the turning point of the Russian people's reception of world cultural experience that was replaced by a transmission when Russian culture became the leading voice to which the entire cultural world had to listen. Dostoevsky insisted that all subsequent great Russian literature came out of Pushkin. European culture noticed this change of roles only after Tolstoy, Dostoevsky, and Chekhov, but the coup took place with Pushkin. Pushkin's legacy extends far beyond his own lifetime. His works continue to inspire and influence writers around the world, making him a true icon of world literature. On the other hand, Pushkin's names abroad is certainly well known, and his special status in Russian culture, which like mysterious Russian soul, foreigners are more surprised than they understand. In conclusion, I want to quote an article by Daniel Granin. Each nation focuses its feelings on one chosen genius. The British have Shakespeare, the Germans have Goethe, the Italians have Dante, the Spaniards have Cervantes. Among other stars of Russian language, Pushkin was chosen and always remains the center of people's love. This love is not the subject of fashion. It is a great happiness for our people that Pushkin has appeared. He decorated the life of many generations, gave it spirituality, conscience, and finally awarded beauty and pleasure. He held the integrity of the national identity together. At the same time, Pushkin wrote about Spaniards, Italians, Austrians, his hero was, Poles, Lithuanians, gypsies. The literature world appreciates and loves his works, diversity. There were no bounds to how he accepted and understood other people. The spirituality of the reading person begins in the school with Pushkin and ends also with Pushkin. Because time comes when, of all friends, he is the most faithful, most necessary, the living bread that never gets tired. Thank you for your attention. 
thank you thank you ma'am thank you for the interesting discourse of course uh, the influence of pushkin on russian literature and also on the world literature and also the influence of pushkin in the modern russian language that's why uh, if i am not mistaken gorky he said about pushkin that he is the beginning of all beginnings nachala sekh nachal so that's what the impact of pushkin's work is on the world literature and in the present russian literature so thank you ma'am and uh, uh shivaji bhaskar sir uh, do we have uh, our honorable vice chancellor uh, yeah dr vishal uh, uh, we are uh, trying to connect with the vice chancellor's office right now right sir uh, in the meantime uh, yeah in the meantime please continue with the you know a uh, little bit uh, information about alexander pushkin we'll just join so to- so uh, in india of course when we talk about the cultural connections between uh, russia and india even uh, in my time when i was in my school days uh, first of all came to know about these russian writers these russian scientists like mendeleev who made the periodic table when i was in my class 7th class 8 we had some short stories of chekhov pushkin in our school curriculum so that was my first acquaintance and i think that is the first acquaintance of any other you know indian person who is uh, in his school curriculum who is undergoing the school days so that was the time when you know the first acquaintance with the russian writers were made and of course uh, with later when uh, we explored the more russian writers like gogol you know so we kindly uh, now we know the corpus of russian literature it's so rich it's so rich even like in the previous uh, talk uh, it was mentioned about nabokov so nabokov did lots of translation not only of pushkin but of other russian writers also but nabokov also till his dying days he believed that uh, the russian language which was his uh, native language is such a rich lexically rich language that to translate those works into in his words and i quote a second grade english language so even nabokov was uh, was so much uh, influence by the richness of the of, of the russian language so that he lamented till his end of his life that he was translating the russian language the uh, the writings the books into in his own words i quote and quote a second grade english language so that's what we can see that you know the russian language is so lexically rich so uh, now i would uh, request in the meanwhile if anyone wants to uh, have some of his observation regarding pushkin then they can in the meanwhile we wait for our honorable vice chancellor if someone wants to express their opinion or their observation about alexander pushkin or about russian literature please feel free to i apologize for the senior advertent uh, gap here uh, vice chancellor is slightly caught up in a meeting and uh, he shall be joining us shortly i apologize for the delay in the meanwhile uh, we have guests from other universities as well where vishal ji would you uh, coordinate with them to to carry on a bit as i can see uh, we have uh, some other distinguished uh, guest here from other universities like i can see dr uh, vinay ambedkar dr priti das uh, then uh, we have dr sonu saini from jawaharlal nehru university so i welcome you all that today uh, you have also decided to be a part of this webinar and uh, i can also see uh, dr vikas kumar singh he is a associate professor of spanish language in uh, indira gandhi national open university so uh, uh, dr vikas kumar singh if you would like to uh, give some observation regarding uh, the russian uh, literature or maybe about alexander pushkin you are most welcome sir
Dr. Vishal, I think Dr. Shivaji Bhaskar would be most appropriate person because uh, since last session, we have introduced master's program in Russian language, which is um, uh, going very well uh, with the students. And we already, already have a certificate program in Russian. So I think he can tell you about the journey uh, and various problems that he encountered while preparing and launching this program of masters in Russian. Dr. So I, would, I would like to uh, request uh, Dr. Shivaji Bhaskar to tell us about the programs which are being running IGNU or regarding to the Russian language. Sir, over to you. Thank you, uh, Honorable PVC ma'am and uh, Dr. Vishal. So, you know, this is a very interesting journey which we had taken in the School of Foreign Languages. And uh, I'm very thankful to my colleague, senior colleague, Dr. Dipan Vita, because before I joined School of Foreign Languages, she was looking after the Russian language here. In the uh, year 2017, actually in January, before uh, we got a letter from the Indian Navy to start uh, foreign language courses in, you know, to facilitate the sailors and the officers from the Indian Navy, it was deliberated upon how to you know, design and develop a certain course and a program which can live up to the expectation of the defense forces. And then uh, with the help of experts from JNU and many more. Ha, sir. Hello. Achha, achha. Thik hai, sir. Thik hai. Yeah. So, uh, you know, in uh, 2017, we started with our certificate uh, program in Russian language. And uh, again, we started our, uh, 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 you know, there are two courses, which focuses on the reading, writing and listening and speaking skills of the Russian language. We started our journey with a huge success with lots of students enrolling in this program. And then later on uh, uh, in year 2020, it was perhaps the first few courses offered by the Indira Gandhi National Open University uh, in online mode. That time we used to get the programs and the courses approved by the UGC. So among three courses offered by the university, Russian was the one. And then uh, the journey you know, uh, continued and in the year 2023, January, we started our master's in Russian. And uh, I'm very you know, happy to say that lots of students and two students from our current batch, the, this is the first ever batch, uh, are also participating. Ms. Shireen Khan and, uh, and uh, Aditya Kothari. Yeah. So these are two students who are uh, uh, participating today in the webinar also. So they will be you know, talking about Alexander Pushkin, it's worse as well as one student, Mr. Kothari, would be reciting the poem Yavas Lyubil on uh, uh, Alexander Pushkin. Uh, I just got a message from uh, uh, Vice Chancellor's office that sir is occupied with a very important meeting right now. So may I request uh, Honorable PVC ma'am uh, uh, to, you know, uh, to chair the webinar ma'am and we may continue with it. Yeah, over to you Vishal. Okay, thank you sir. So I would like to request uh, our PVC, Honorable uh, PVC, uh, to uh, give the presidential address because uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor right now is preoccupied with some important work. So if uh, PVC ma'am will be kind enough to grace this occasion with also the presidential address. Ma'am, over to you. Thank you, Dr. Vishal, for giving me this opportunity to speak again. Actually, the, I'm very happy school is doing very well because there was a time once when we had only certificate and diploma programs in the university. But since last two, three years, the school has launched many, many programs uh, which are of master's level. And still there are some disciplines in which we are taking different initiatives. School is organizing various webinars regularly. And uh, here, this program, Masters in Russian, is going very well. Uh, as we all know, 
that uh, the uh, language programs are now being incorporated. They're, they're being recognized as skill level programs uh, by the uh, Ministry of Education since the introduction of NEP 2020. So these programs will definitely uh, be able to attract many, many students and uh, a large number of students will be able to reap benefit out of these programs. This collaborative activity by Financial University with Financial University Russia uh, of IGNU is definitely uh, a milestone as far as uh, the language, Russian language is concerned. I hope school will continue this kind of activities in future. And this is a very good initiation. Uh, once again, I congratulate Director uh, Dr. Deepanvita Shivastav, uh, Shivaji Bhaskar, uh, Dr. Vishal, and all other people, all other people associated with this program. And I'm sure that this will present a learning opportunity for all the students and it will motivate them to participate in this program and take active interest in Russian language. I also thank uh, on behalf of IGNU, I also thank both the speakers. Uh, so uh, thank you and best wishes. Over to you, Dr. Vishal. You can go thank you. again to the next session. Thank you, ma'am, for the address. We at the School of Foreign Languages are very thankful to you and to the Vice Chancellor, sir, for constantly motivating and guiding us. May our school reach even greater heights under your and Honorable Vice Chancellor supervision. Thank you, ma'am. So with these words, I would like now to invite Dr. Tufel Ahmed. Uh, Dr. Tufel Ahmed is a consultant working in School of Foreign Language, IGNU, uh, and he teaches Arabic language. So Dr. Tufel Ahmed, I would like you to now uh, say the vote of thanks. Over to you, Dr. Tufel Ahmed. Thank you, Vishal. Good evening to one and all present here. On behalf of the School of Foreign Languages, IGNU, I extend a warm welcome to the people present here virtually. I would, I would like to express my gratitude to all the esteemed delegates of this event for their presence and contribution to making this event a great success. It is indeed an honor for me to get the opportunity to propose a vote of thanks on this occasion. First and foremost, I would like to extend my gratitude to our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Nageveshwar Rao, who could not join due to some constraints. After that, I would like to express my heartiest thanks to Mrs. Yulia Areva, head of the cultural department, Russian Embassy at New Delhi, who despite her busy schedule, is spare time to grace this occasion and shedding light on the Alexander Pushkin's and literary works. Thank you, ma'am. I would also like to extend my gratitude to our Pro Vice Chancellor, Professor Sumitra Kretiman, for her special address and touching upon different aspects of Alexander Pushkin's literary works. And she rightly said that Pushkin's literary works have been translated in many languages, including Indian, Indian languages. Here, I would like to say that Alexander Pushkin's representative stories have been translated in Indian language, which is Hindi language, as Alexander Pushkin, Pratindhi, Kahaniya. And one of the progressive writer has said about Pushkin, quote, Unki azmat aur khubsurti ki bina par Alexander Pushkin ke ashar ka tarjima nahi kiya ja sakta. The translation of the quote is, his verses are untranslatable owing to their great beauty. So thank you, ma'am. I would also like to express my gratitude to Dr. Nina Kozlov Siva, Deputy Head for Scientific Work and International Activities for the Department of Foreign Languages, International Communication, Financial University Russia, for not only sparing her invaluable time for us to grace this occasion, but also for enlightening us with her insightful talk on the subject. Thank you, Dr. Nina. I would also like to express my gratitude to Pro Vice Chancellors, Professor Satya Kamsar, Professor Umakanji Lalman, Professor Srikant Mahapatra sir, and Professor Manrup Singh Meena sir, and all the dignitaries present here virtually. I would also like to thank Dr. Dipanvita Srivastava, Director of the School of Foreign Languages, for her opening remarks and for being instrumental in organizing this webinar. Thank you, ma'am. 
I am also thankful to the convener of this webinar, Mr. Shivaji Bhaskar sir, for his introductory remarks and for having an active role in organizing this webinar on Alexander Pushkin in a very short period of time. Thank you, sir. I would also like to thank our respected director, directors, director RSD, EMPC, COE, and all the directors and assistant directors of regional centers for their constant help and guidance. I am, I am very much thankful to the moderator, Dr. Vishal Kumar Sinha, and all the faculty members, deputy directors, assistant directors, and entire IGNO family, colleagues, friends, and non-teaching staff without whom this program would not have been possible. I also take this opportunity to propose a word of thanks to those who have directly and indirectly contributed to this webinar. Thank you all for making this program successful. Thank you once again. Thank you all. Over to you, Dr. Vishal. And I would like to thank Dr. Tufel Ahmed for his vote of thanks. Uh, with this, uh, we have concluded our first session and we will take a quick break of 10 minutes and we will again reconvene at sharp 4 o'clock for our second session. So thank you all. We will convene at 4 o'clock sharp. Thank you.
So, with the permission of the Honorable Director, Dr. Dipanvita Sri. Yeah, I am here only. Yes, sir. So, with the permission, uh, uh, can we uh, convene the second session? Okay. Uh, so, I welcome you back in the second session of the today's uh, uh, webinar, which we are celebrating to commemorate the uh, birthday of one of the greatest. Russian writer Alexander Sergeyevich Pushkin. Well, talking of uh, Pushkin, the poet's birth anniversary received the state status in 1997, according to the decree of the president of the Russian Federation. That is, on, on the 200th birthday anniversary of Alexander Pushkin and Pushkin Day in Russian Foundation. In this holiday, as in the old days, thousands of people gather to listen to poetry performed by young or already fulfilled poets in the Pushkin mountains and in the Pushkin state in Mikhailovskaya. Pushkin Day in Russia is celebrated annually in all cities of the country. Also on this day, there are many cultural events dedicated to the legacy of this great poet, literature and the Russian language. So in the second session of our webinar today, we have presentations by faculty and by the students as well. I would like to now invite Dr. Shivaji Bhaskar, Assistant Professor Russian SOFL IGNU, for a talk on 
Pushkin's legacy and world literature. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Vishal. I hope I'm audible to everyone. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are. So I welcome all the participants, our colleagues from Financial University Russia, Dr. Nina, Dr. Alina, and Dr. Galina, our students of MA first year, Mr. Aditya and uh, Ms. Shireen Khan. I also like to thank my colleague, Dr. Vishal, for moderating the earlier session and now this session, and our uh, higher authorities for you know letting us uh, organize this important webinar today. So to begin our uh, uh, next session, why the title was chosen, Alexander Pushkin, the icon of the world literature. As very rightly, Dr. Nina, she said that uh, like in other languages in German, in Spanish, we have certain figures like Max Muller in the German and we have Alexander Pushkin who is representing the Russian literature, the Russian identity and the style and the genre of uh, the Russian uh, you know, uh, writing, whether it's the poem or it's the novels written by Alexander Pushkin. It has a certain uh, you know, uh, weight and a certain uh, style, quality of the literature, which is carried by Alexander Pushkin's work all over the world. As we all know very well that uh, Alexander Pushkin, who was born in 1799 in a noble family, and uh, he is considered to be the, uh, you know, Russian romantic writer, whom most Russians consider their greatest poet and the founder of uh, modern Russian literature. Before the 17th century, Russian literature consisted mainly of the religious hagiography, you know, uh, religious texts where people used to write about the saints and, you know, in their praise. So most of the literature, most of the literary world there that time was actually, you know, covered by hagiographies and chronicles written in the language of the Russian Orthodox Church. The old church Slavonic which is, uh, you know, uh, widely used that time. But when Pushkin came into the picture, for some poets and dramatists writing prior to Pushkin, notably the Russian scientist Mikhail Vasilyevich Lamasov and Gavri Darjavan, there was no commonly accepted literary language. So all credit goes to the great Russian writer Alexander Pushkin himself. From his own childhood, because it was considered that in the noble family, there was a library lots of books from the uh, you know uh, famous russian writers and famous russian famous uh, writers of the world was kept and uh, uh, pushkin had this opportunity and the you know luxury of going to such literature which actually you know uh, 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 formed his style which helped him in uh, thinking that's why he could write so you know in a in a very pure manner and uh, such a manner that even today, we are conducting such a webinar where we are talking about Alexander Pushkin. It was said that uh, uh, he used to synthesize European literary traditions with Russian folklore. Pushkin created not only the basis for modern Russian vernacular, but also a style of storytelling by mixing drama, romance, and satire. His style greatly influenced later Russian writers and has been associated with Russian literature ever since. Pushkin occupies a singular status among both Russian common people and intelligentsia. You know, during that time, it was very difficult to, you know, uh, uh, differentiate between a people's writer and a writer who writes for the court. Uh, the entire history is full of such writers where people have been, you know, uh, uh, branded as that you have been greatly influenced by the uh, emperor or the court and you're writing um, many things where with a lot of embellishment, but Pushkin has such a style where he's writing for the common man. That is why he has been, uh, you know, coined very appropriately as the, uh, you know, father of uh, Russian literature. 
During Pushkin's time and the later Soviet period also, poetry was one of the only means of free expression and Pushkin remained the uh, preeminent writer of the Soviet establishment and dissidents alike. It is said that Pushkin lived an undisciplined, disciplined life carrying on affairs with several married women. It is also said like that, however, he lost his own life during the duel, you know, in claiming his wife from the officer Dante, which is also very, you know, his own life is very much like a drama itself. When you look at the, uh, you know, uh, today in, uh, you know, movies and, you know, uh, dramas on television and the theater, then you sometimes feel as if it is, uh, you know, something which you cannot believe. But Pushkin's life is like that. That is why he inspires, you know, young and old alike to write a lot about love, about misery, about, you know, winning and losing. It is important to understand that, you know, uh, of first time among the Russian poets, the scope of his influence is comparable to other private national literary figures like Dr. Nina also said in the earlier session, such as William Shakespeare and, you know, Wolfgang and Gothe. His life, you know, definitely comes from a noble lineage. His father, descendant from one of the Russian gentry, oldest families, tracing their history back to the 13th century. His mother's grandfather was a Abrahamovich Yanibal, an Athenian who was abducted as a child and ended up in Russia. Yanibal's uh, Peter the Great, you know, you can imagine the height and the, you know, rise of this family during the Peter Great time that they were from a very, uh, you know, prominent family in the Russian Empire. Again, it is said that he's not only carrying his lineage, his legacy as a true cosmopolitan person, which probably gave him uh, that edge over other you know, writers to write profoundly about love, about his country, and sometimes, of course, about the anti-establishment. So that is why it is important to understand that when we say that Alexander Pushkin is the icon of the world literature, if we do more research, maybe joint studies with, uh, you know, Department of Foreign Languages, uh, Financial University, if our colleagues are agree, we may, you know, uncover many facets of the life of Alexander Pushkin. As you know, uh, it was said that Alexander Pushkin never traveled beyond Russian Empire. But we must understand during that time, a lot of people, a lot of uh, you know, writers and merchants, they were traveling all, all over the world. They must be carrying something, some literary idea, some understanding of the literature along with them which might have influenced the life of others in other countries. So I would like to propose that if may, may you know, if we, uh, you know, do a joint study together where we can try to find out how Russian great Alexander Pushkin, he influenced the life of, uh, and the, uh, the common life of people there in other countries, or maybe the genres, or maybe the style of writing in other countries, that would be a great tribute to him. So with this webinar, let, let us take a resolution if you all agree that we may do some kind of a project or some kind of a study jointly uh, where we would like to not only talk about you know, uh, his origin, his writing, his work and the duel and everything, but let's go beyond that. I personally believe that it would be a you know, true uh, uh, homage to this great uh, Russian writer, Alexander Pushkin, as the icon of the world literature. So with this, I would like to uh, conclude my talk and uh, would like to uh, thank all the uh, you know, participants for listening. And now it's over to you, Dr. Vishal. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for this uh, insert file, uh, insightful information and discourse. Of course, I mean, when we talk about Pushkin as a literary figure. And when we also talk about the corpus of his work, literary works. So there are so many new, new ways to explore his works from different prisms. So thank you, sir. And uh, taking the uh, webinar forward, uh, many evenings are devoted to Pushkin's love lyrics by the ardent fans of literature all over the world. This will include Pushkin's most popular love poems amongst others. 
For example, Yavas Lubil, Libov Ishobit Mojet, I loved you in my heart perhaps, or Yapom Nuyu Chudne Mandavenie, that moment comes to me again, or Nipoi Krasavitsa Priminie, my, my beauty do not sing to me. So, with this, I would like now to invite Dr. Galina Triyakova, Associate Professor, Department of Foreign Language and Intercultural Communication, Faculty of International Economic Relations, Financial University, Russia, for a talk on Pushkin's love lyrics. Ma'am, over to you. Thank you so much for the invitation, uh, dear colleagues. I'd like to greet you. And first of all, I'd like to share the screen with you, is it, if it's possible. Well, yeah, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, your screen is visible. Where is it? Ekran Just a minute. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. Can you see my presentation? Yes, ma'am. The presentation yeah. is visible on the screen. Okay. So let's start. Indeed, love is the most priceless feeling that fills our life with meaning, making it bright, rich, and expressive. Love gives an incentive to a person in any of its manifestations. With the feeling comes inspiration, in verse, and prose. The theme of love in Pushkin's lyrics occupies one of the main places. The poet's creations are unique in the theme of love. Uh, his poems are read fluently and inspiringly. There is an empathy for the passion that the poet experienced. Love for a poet is not only an inspiration, it is also the light of vitality and creative activity. It is the theme of love in Pushkin's lyrics that, that makes it possible to understand his works. Love moved him. Thanks to love, he created a lot of masterpieces. Pushkin's true love was Anna Petrovna Kiern, whom he sang in the poem, I remember a wonderful moment. She was a daughter of the rich parents and was married at the age of 16 to General Yermolai Kiern, who was 50 years old. Naturally, she was unhappy in her marriage. She met Pushkin at the house of her relatives, the Alenians. The poet wrote her passionate letters. For Pushkin, love for Anna Kiern is a bright and sincere feeling. She is dear to him, even if this feeling remains unanswered. Pushkin tenderly and selflessly treats a woman who excited his soul, gave a passionate impulse and filled life with meaning. He is noble and does not want to disturb the woman he loves. The poet is ready to give up the place of love for her peace of mind. I remember a wonderful moment as before my eyes you appeared, like a vision, fleeting, momentary, like a spirit of the purest beauty. In the torture of hopeless melancholy, in the bustle of the world's noisy hours, that voice rang out so tenderly, I dreamed of that lovely face of yours. The years flew quickly, the storms blast scattered the dreams of former times, and they forgot your tender voice and the features of your heavenly face. In remoteness, in gloomy isolation, my days dragged quietly. Nothing was new. No godlike face, no inspiration, no tears, no life, no love. Know you. Then to my soul an awakening came, came, and there again your face appeared. 
like a vision, fleeting, momentary, like a spirit of the purest beauty. And my heart beat with the rapture in you, and for its sake arose again, a godlike face, an inspiration, and life, and tears, and love, and you. Unfortunately, as I've already mentioned, this love remained unanswered, and later on, it turned into quiet friendship. The next love was Anna Lenina. She wasn't just beautiful. Contemporaries noted her subtle mind and impeccable artistic taste. She was a brilliant musician and wrote music herself. Pushkin dedicated several more poems to Anna Lenina, her eyes, the last language of love is jet, and many others. Pushkin's infatuation was so serious that in 1828, the poet wooed Alenina, but he was refused, and not occasionally. Pushkin was considered not the best candidate uh, for a husband. He was poor, loved gambling, and the whole world knew about his problems with authorities and amorous adventures. Biographers write that the poet was shocked by that refusal. And soon he wrote his famous poem, I Loved You. Uh, this short poem is known to everyone. It is rightfully considered a masterpiece of love lyrics. I loved you. In my heart, there is a number of love, not wholly faded it may be, but do not let it hurt you to remember. I would not have you suffer pain for me. I loved you in a hopeless, silent fashion, wrapped now by shyness, now by jealous fear. I loved you with such a pure and tender passion. God grant another love to so, my dear. What is special about these lines? There are no bright epithets, no juicy metaphors, no striking comparisons. Perhaps the whole secret lies in this imaginary simplicity. After all, uh, when people talk about the innermost, they do not think about how flowery to decorate their speech. Firstly, the nobility of the lyrical hero is emphasized, his unwillingness to disturb his beloved. Secondly, the phrase reveals the full power of the ly lyrical hero's love, the richness of his experiences. And thirdly, it talks about the true essence of love. True love is selfless, devoid of selfishness. The main thing in it is the happiness of a loved one. The gentle and insistent refrain, I loved you, says that love really has not completely faded away yet. But already in 1829, he offered his hand and heart to the young Natalia Kancherova. Was Anna Lenina the love of Pushkin's life? Judging by how soon he was consoled, no. Then who was that? The greatest love in Pushkin's life was his wife, Natalia Kinchirova. He is grateful that the fate for meeting an angel. The poem Madonna was written six months before Pushkin's wedding with Kinchirova. In it, he idolizes his beloved, worshiping her, experiencing reverent religious awe. The face of the beloved woman is tender. She is chaste and pure. For Pushkin, Gonchirova is a charming creature, a Madonna, the ideal of femininity and spiritual harmony. She touches his heart, brings him peace and grace. 
At the same time, uh, the poet Don Juan's list has been preserved, which he himself recorded in the album before his marriage. There are more than 30 names in this list. And in one letters, the poet jokingly says that Natalia Gancherova is 113th love. Of course, he was joking. But still, Pushkin passionately loved women. And most often, they reciprocated him, despite the fact that the poet was not distinguished by the beauty. And what is his secret? Here is one of the women's memories of Pushkin. His slightly swarthy face was original, but ugly. A large open forehead, a long nose, thick lips, generally irregular features. But what was great about him was his dark gray eyes with the bluish tint, large and clear. It is impossible to convey the expression of this eyes. Some kind of burning, and at the same time, caressing, pleasant. I have never seen a more expressive face, intelligent, kind, energetic. He speaks well. Ah, oh, how much intelligence and life there was in his non-artistic speech. And how cheerful, kind, charming he is. But if Pushkin valued constancy and loyalty in friendship, love for him was a free element, like the sea. Love was a source of inspiration. One infatuation was replaced by another. And in each, the poet was absolutely sincere. Maria Rajewska wrote about Pushkin. As a poet, he considered it his duty to be in love with all pretty women and young girls. In fact, he adored only his muse and poetized everything he saw. The theme of love in Pushkin's very famous novel, Eugene Onegin, or as you like, Yevgeny Onegin, is a kind of love intrigue. A noble young man is one of the main characters of the poem. This is not a bad person. Yevgeny is a complex, inconsistent character. However, the person is well-mannered and educated. He wants to find sincere love, but at the same time, cynically stays away from it. This behavior is explained by the fact that the hero does not want to bind himself with false oaths and promises. He meets Tatiana in the village when he comes to rest to his estate. For Tatiana Larina, love is the highest feeling that embodies happiness, light, sincerity. They have a lot of common interests. They read, walk, both not like social fuss, but their understanding of love is different. Tatiana fell in love uh, with Onegin. Tatiana's letter to Onegin admires the power of love and sensitivity of her mind. It is full of hope for reciprocity, but Onegin could not understand, understand that feeling. In fact, Evgeny does not know how to love. He does not see the point in it. With his only friend, Lensky, he argues on this topic. Lensky has a romantic and refined nature. He idolizes love and strives for it. Their differences lead to a duel in which Onegin kills Lensky. The mood of a friend radically changed Onegin's life. He realized his actions, but it was too late. When Onegin met Tatiana again, she was already a married lady. He was amazed by her nobility, simplicity, and benevolence. Tatiana conquered Onegin. Eugene declares his love to her, but 
suffers a fiasco. She refuses him. She has a strong sense of duty, family, and decency. All this is above the feeling of love. So, this is how the theme of love is revealed in Pushkin's lyrics. Poems, prose demonstrate to us the greatness and ability of soul and generosity of the poet. For Pushkin, love is a shackle of which he is not ashamed. Pushkin is ready for voluntary imprisonment. In imperishable love, he contemplates immortality. For Pushkin, the female image is the personification of tenderness, purity, beauty, and sublime. This is an example of the highest recognition of a woman. Therefore, it is difficult to speak briefly about the theme of love in Pushkin's work. Pushkin's poetry is a magnetic phenomenon. It has a beneficial effect on a person reviving him. This poetry is immortal because it reveals all the wonderful qualities in the person. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Спасибо, доктор Галина, за ваш содержательный дискурс. Спасибо вам. And, it's my uh, pleasure. It's my pleasure. Uh, and yes, everyone in the university days who reads the poem of Pushkin connects with the recurring theme of Pushkin's poetry, which is love, unrequited love, and longingness. So yes, we all do connect with the themes in Pushkin's poem. And then taking uh, this webinar forward, the next topic uh, uh, on which uh, I am going to deliver a small talk is how Pushkin made not only the Russians, but also the foreigners, the outsiders, fall in love with the Russian language. So uh, the, memori the memoirs about Alexander Pushkin by his brother, Lev Pushkin, note that, I quote him, the passion for poetry appeared in him with the first concepts. At the age of eight, being able to read and write, he composed small comedies and epigrams in French for his teachers. Then, of course, when in 1811, when uh, Pushkin goes to uh, Imperial Sarskaya Sial Lyceum for his further studies, so about this period, the historian uh, Alexander Kirpichnikov, in his essays on the history of new Russian literature, writes, Pushkin's natural abilities quickly developed in the Lyceum. He read extremely much and remembered everything once read perfectly. He was most interested in French and Russian literature and history. He was one of the most diligent collaborators in manuscript Lyceum magazines. So as we can see that uh, Pushkin from the very young age has shown a tremendous aptitude towards literature of French and Russian realm. Then uh, behind the milestone of the short life of Alexander Pushkin is the immense element of his work. Pushkin is the most precious thing Russia has. So uh, the literary critic Julius Eschenwald says about uh, Pushkin, and he also further adds that the Russian world has never created such a feast, such a bright holiday. It never reached such exaltation and triumph as in this radiant work, which translated into sound all the goodness and all the beauty of the universe, the divine echo of the divine voice. For the first time in the works of Pushkin, the Russian language found a worthy expression and appeared in all its greatness. The poetic genius of Pushkin was, one might say, a friend of the genius of the Russian language. So uh, these words are of Nikolai Nikrasov, which were included in the collection of articles Alexander Pushkin, 1905, and comp compiled by the literary historian Vasily Pakrovsky. His works received critical acclaim, and he was highly respected by his contemporaries and subsequent generations of writers. Alexander Pushkin's legacy is vast and en enduring. He is regarded as the founder of modern Russian literature and the pioneer of literary realism in Russia. Pushkin's works had a profound impact on subsequent generations of writers and poets, shaping the course of Russian literature and not only of Russian literature, but also of the world literature in general. His innovative use of the Russian language, his ability to capture the essence of Russian society and culture, 
and his exploration of universal themes continue to inspire and captive our readers to this present generation. Pushkin's work have been translated into numerous languages, allowing his literary contributions to reach a global audience. Pushkin's legacy extends beyond his literary achievements. He played a significant role in fostering a sense of national identity and pride among the Russian people. He celebrated Russian history, culture, and folklore in his works, instilling a sense of patriotism and cultural appreciation among his readers. To honor Pushkin's impact and commemorate his contributions to Russian literature, his birthday, June 6, is celebrated as Russian Language Day in Russia. Alexander Pushkin's literary genius and his ability to capture the human experience with depth and beauty ensured that his legacy as one of Russia's greatest literary figures will continue to thrive for generations to come. The famous Russian critic Belinsky writes that, I quote him, to write about Pushkin is to write about the entire Russian literature. And the great Russian writer Gorky also terms him as the beginning of all beginnings. Nachala Syak Nacho. Thanks to Pushkin's poetry and prose, the Russian literary language was born and language is a unifying force of the people, wrote publicist and publisher Mikhail Katkov in an article from the collection Alexander Pushkin in his Artistic, Historical and Public Meaning, 1901, of the, of the writer Nikolai Pakrovsky. Pushkin made not only his own, but also strangers love our language. Naruskam, Pushkin jasta vil nitol ka swaikh, no it chuzik palyubit nasizik. Spasiba. Moving forward, uh, the various themes and emotions in Pushkin's writings, like love, longing, desire, faith, nature, river beats, and touches the chord of not only a Russian person's heart, but also a people of different nationalities. To elucidate on this further, I would now like to invite Ms. Alina Gusieva, Senior Lecturer of the Department of Foreign Languages and Intercultural Communications, Faculty of International Economic Relations, Financial University under the Government of the Russian Federation, with a talk on, one does not need to be Russian to love Pushkin. Over to you, dear ma'am. Um, hello, dear conference organizers. Hello, dear participants. Thank you very much for having me, for inviting me. And I would like to thank our conference organizers for the opportunity to be part of such an incredible, inspiring and enjoyable event. Dear conference participants, I would like to thank you for your splendid and exciting presentations. May I, sh uh, may I share my screen? So today, I would like to honor the memory of and to pay tribute to the great Russian poet and writer Alexander Pushkin. One does not need to be Russian to love Alexander Pushkin, as his works are not limited to Russian culture and language and can hardly be overestimated. Pushkin's literary themes such as love, nature, friendship, motherland, life and death are universal and can be appreciated by people of different cultural backgrounds and languages. The influence of Alexander Pushkin extends far beyond Russia, and his works have been translated in over 170 languages, including English, French, German, Spanish, Italian, Japanese, and many others. This makes him one of the most extensively translated Russian authors. The most translated works by Alexander Pushkin include his epic poem Evgenia Negin, his play Boris Godunov, and his fairy tale The Golden Cockerel. Pushkin's works have had a significant impact on the world of literature and have inspired many writers and poets around the globe. His influence is apparent in the works of Edgar Allan Poe, Gustave Flaubert, Redin Bradan Tagore, and these are just a few examples. 
Therefore, one does not need to be Russian to appreciate the contribution of Alexander Pushkin to world literature and to be inspired by his works. However, Pushkin's legacy is not limited to literature. His emphasis on civic responsibility, his life affirming uh, vigor, and his confidence in the triumph of reason over prejudice has struck an echo all over the world. His heritage has served as a bridge between Russia and other countries, promoting cultural exchange and understanding. The Pushkin Prize, established in 1881, is an international award that recognizes outstanding contri contributions to the world of literature. The Medal of Pushkin is a state decoration of the Russian Federation that is awarded to its citizens and foreigners for achievements in arts, culture, education, and humanities. The Pushkin Museum of Fine Arts in Moscow is another example of international influence of, of Pushkin's legacy that showcases art from around the world and promotes cultural exchange between Russia and other countries. Pushkin's influence, Pushkin's influence and legacy will go far. Sorry. You're audible, ma'am. Please go ahead. Yeah. Sorry, I need the previous slide. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. This one. Sorry for that. Uh, so, um, Pushkin's influence and legacy go far beyond Russia, and there are several monuments dedicated to him in different countries. One of them is in the Russian Center of Science and Culture in New Delhi, and it was uh, established in uh, the year 2000. Another Pushkin monument is located in the capital city of Bulgaria, Sofia, and it was erected in 1882. The monument features a bronze statue of Pushkin on a granite pedestal and is located in the city central park. There are some other monuments uh, to Pushkin all over the world, and you can see some of them on the slide. When I was researching on the topic, I found out an interesting fact about Pushkin's influence on Indian cinema. Some Indian films have been inspired by Pushkin's works. For example, the Bollywood film Heida is based on Pushkin's play The Captain Daughter. I'm very eager to see it one day. In summary, Pushkin's impact on world societies is significant and multifaceted, ranging from literature and politics to culture and international relations. His ideas and beliefs continue to inspire and influence people from different countries and backgrounds all over the world. That is why one does not to be Russian to love Pushkin. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Alina, for the informative discourse. And also, uh, when we talk about the influence of Russian writers, their stories on Bollywood, that is the Indian film industry. So one more example which comes to my mind is Fyodor Dostoevsky's Bieli and Nochi. So Dostoevsky wrote uh, Bieli and Nochi somewhere in 1848, but it was adapted in the Bollywood in this film called Savaria. So it was a musical hit uh, a movie. Some, it was like six, seven years ago, it was premiered in India. So it was adapted on the story by Dostoevsky, Bieli and Nochi. So yes, I, I mean, uh, when we talk about Bollywood also, I mean, there are so many uh, movies which has been adapted on some Russian story. So that will be a very uh, interesting uh, topic to be explored in some uh, future research work. So thank you, uh, Ms. Alina. And thank then, you, my pleasure. Uh, and then I move forward. Now I would like to invite uh, Ms. Shirin Khan. Ms. Shirin Khan is pursuing her master's in Russian language and literature from uh, Indira Gandhi uh, uh, National Open University. And uh, she is going to present a short introduction on Pushkin and also a brief uh, analysis of the poem, Yavas Libyo. Ms. Shirin, over to you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, so, am I clearly one. audible? Yes, you are audible. Yeah. Can I begin? Yeah, sure. Thank you. 
Uh, hi everyone, this is Shireen from MA Russian IGNU. I'm going to say a few words about Pushkin and his poem Yavas Lyubil. As we all know, Alexander Sergeyevich Pushkin is one of the greatest Russian poet and the founder of modern Russian literature. And uh, Yavas Lyubil is uh, one of his best poem of the Romanticism era of Russia. Yavas Lyubil uh, is a simple but effective poem in which the speaker expresses his devotion and respect for a woman he loved. We don't exactly know whom this poem is dedicated to, but when this poem was written in uh, 1829, Pushkin proposed to Natalia Goncharov. The main theme of the poem is the incomplete love of the lyrical hero. Through the lyrics, he is showing his feelings, uh, sincerity, devotion, tenderness, and sorrow to his lover. Although the lyrical hero still loves her, but he is ready to depart from her life. In the last line of the poem, Kak Dai uh, Bambo. Uh, Ms. Shirin, sorry to uh, cut you off. Uh, yeah. There is a, a small request from our side. Can you uh, share your, uh, I mean, can you, uh, uh, Open your camera, please. Um, sure, you sir. Are, um, yeah. Um, if okay, if there is a technical problem, it's okay. You can continue. But if it's uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, you are visible now. Okay. Thank you. So, like, should I start from the starting or uh, no? We no, can you can continue. start. Yeah, yeah, you can start from where you left. Okay. Uh, the main theme of the poem is uh, the incomplete love of the lyrical hero. Through the lyrics, uh, he is showing his feelings, sincerity, devotion, tenderness, and sorrow for his lover. Although the lyrical hero is still in love with her, but he is ready to depart from her life. And uh, in the last line of the poem, he uh, says like, Kag daivam bok liubi mai beech drugi. The hero shows the highest level of love, that is selflessness. He wants his lover to be happy in life, even if the happiness is with some other person. And uh, in the poem, he says, I loved you. Love in my soul maybe still hasn't completely faded away. But uh, don't let it trouble you. I don't want anything to make you sad. I love you silently, hopelessly. Tormented one moment by shyness, another by jealousy. I loved you so sincerely, so tenderly, but with such scope as God sent you be loved by someone else. Uh, that's it from my side. Thanks a lot, everyone. Balshu is pasiva za washivini mami. Is pasiva vam. Is pasiva vam. So thank you, Ms. Shirin, for the wonderful recitation of the English uh, translation of the poem. And now we will move on to Mr. Aditya Kothari. Mr. Aditya is also pursuing his master's in Russian language and literature from SOFL, Aigidu. And uh, right now he is going to, to recite the poem, Yavas Lyubil Naruska Mizikia. Aditya. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Shireen, uh, for your explanation. Uh, I think you have made my job very easy. Uh, so I just have to now uh, read the poem. Uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Sivaji Bhaskar, sir. Uh, Dr. Vishal Kumar sir uh, for giving me the opportunity uh, to recite this poem. And second of all, I would just like to congratulate uh, everybody. I would like to wish everybody happy Russian language day. Uh, okay, so with this, I would just like to uh, recite the poem. Uh, of Pushkin. Я вас любил. Любовь еще быть может по душе моей. Угасла не совсем. Но пусть она вас больше не тревожит. Я не хочу печалить вас ничем. Я вас любил безмолвно, безнадежно, то робостью, то ревностью тами. Я вас любил так искренно, так нежно, как дай вам Бог любимой быть другим. Uh, 
thank uh, thank you okay uh, thank you very much sir uh, thank you everybody uh, for uh, for your attention for your time and second uh, i just like to add one one thing that uh, i just bought my copy of uh, pushkin uh, this kapitanska uh, dosh so oh, uh, i would just like to uh, use this opportunity to spread the awareness uh, i i we are already we are all are doing that but uh, I think we can promise uh, that we will uh, will definitely read one copy at least one story of Pushkin, uh, and uh, yes, uh, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Спасибо вам большое. И спасибо вам тоже. It was a very nice recitation uh, of the poem of, of Pushkin, and also like uh, when we see our students like Shirin, Aditya performing well, reciting the poems with good you know accent. so as a teacher also it motivates us it motivates us to you know to double the hard work that you know which we are you know are doing behind our students so thank you dear students thank you to both, uh, both of you for thank making you. our day thank you thank you, thank you. and uh, so with this uh, i will move towards the last uh, event of the day which is a vote of thanks by dr tufel ahmed dr tufel is a consultant in igno he is teaching arabic language and uh, dr tufel over to you sir thank you vishal good evening everyone everyone on behalf of a school of foreign languages indira gandhi national open university it is my privilege to propose a vote of thanks on this occasion my heart fills with lots of gratitude and respect for all the dignitaries and distinguished speakers for not only totally sparing their invaluable time for us to grace this occasion but also for enlightening us with your commendable talk on the subject first and foremost i would like to extend my gratitude to our honorable vice chancellor professor nagaveshwar rao who despite his engagement with the three institutions always spares time for us and enlightens us with his encouraging words but due to some urgency he could not join us today I would also like to express my gratitude to our pro vice chancellors professor sumitra kukriti ma'am professor satya kamsar professor makanjilal ma'am professor srikant mahapatra sir and professor manrup singh meena sir and all the dignitaries who are virtually connected with this program i am very much thankful to the faculty members and colleagues of financial university russia especially dr dina kozlov seva deputy head for scientific work and international activities for the department of foreign languages and international communication financial industry russia dr galina terekofova associate professor department of foreign languages and international communication faculty of international economic relations financial industry russia and dr alina goseva senior lecturer of the department of foreign languages and international communication faculty of international economic relations financial industry russia for participating in this webinar and touching upon different aspects of alexander pushkin's literary works thank you all alexander pushkin is not confined to the russian federation but he has reached each and every corner of the world through his novel short stories and poetry it will not it will not be wrong to say that alexander pushkin is everywhere as his literary works have been translated in many international languages and one of the most important languages is arabic language his novels and short stories have been translated by a syrian writer dr fuad al marai jamiu amal ar riwaiya wal qasasiya qad tamma tarjumatuhu bil lughat al arabiya so this was the english translation uh, arabic translation of alexander pushkin's literary works so thank you all for deliberating today on alexander pushkin the icon of the world literature I would also like to thank Dr. Dipan Mitha Sirvasto, Director of School of Foreign Languages, for being instrumental in organizing this webinar. Thank you, ma'am. I am also thankful to the convener of this webinar, Mr. Shivaji Bhaskar sir, for shedding light on Pushkin's legacy and world literature. Thank you, sir. I am also very much thankful to the moderator, Dr. Vishal Kumar Sinha, for giving an insightful talk on the subject. Thank you, Vishal. I am also thankful to the faculty members, scholars, academic counselors, and students of our university, especially Mr. Shirin Khan and Mr. and Mr. Aditya Kothari. Both of them are student of MA in Russian language at School of Foreign Languages, IGNU, for all and truly taking up the initiatives and parts and presenting paper on Alexander Pushkin's poetry. Thank you, both of you. 
I would also okay. like to thank all the thank directors, you. regional directors, deputy directors, assistant directors, and non-teaching staff without whom this program would not have been possible. Thank you all for making this event a grand success. Thank you once again. Thank you all. Over thank you, you, Dr. Kufen. I just received one beautiful message from Dr. Nina. Uh, please tell your students that they did an amazing job during the webinar and they have very good Russian. Congratulations to all of you. And as I, the program coordinator and faculty of Russian, I also would like to express congratulations to you, Aditya Kothari and Shirin Khan, for beautifully doing your job. Analysis of the Yavas review and recitation of the Alexander Pushkin's poem. And my, you know, uh, it gives me immense pleasure to also thank uh, uh, Dr. Alina and Dr. Alina and Dr. Nina for beautifully presenting your paper on different aspects of Alexander Pushkin's life. Because, you know, this is perhaps the first time School of Foreign Languages, the discipline of Russian, has collaborated with a foreign university, that to financial university, Russia. So it's a historic moment for us that we have collaborated with, you know, uh, great people like you. And in future also, we were discussing that uh, we may take this, uh, you know, uh, opportunity further by collaborating with. Uh, sir, you are mute. Uh... Dr. Shivaji Bhaskar. Uh, My audible. Dr. Uh, yes. Shivaji Bhaskar, are you there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Am I audible? Can you hear me? Yeah. Am I yes, audible? sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, Dr. Bhaskar. Please continue. Okay. I'm saying that we would take this opportunity to take further by collaborating with Financial University Russia, by doing more students exchange program, faculty exchange program, and by organizing more such uh, joint programs like this webinar. And also by, uh, you know, doing joint studies. So my, you know, uh, deep sense of gratitude to you all, uh, uh, Dr. Alina, with respect, Suvajenyam Mi Gavrim Vinji Ji. So Alina Ji, Nina Ji, and Alina Ji. We are very thankful to you all that you have, uh, you know, joined us today and we have collaborated and I believe that it is a great success today. So congratulations to everyone. Congratulations to all. Thank you so much. Dhanyavad. So with this, the webinar is concluded. So thank you all for being a part of today's webinar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Vishnu. Thank you very much. Thank you. It was a great pleasure.